Today we are going to talk about in depth Oklahoma's 22 signees and what that means for Oklahoma going forward and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time and today we are going to talk about Oklahoma's 22 signees for the 2019 class and one dude for which everybody should be waiting on to see what that dude does and his name is not Justin Fields. I'm gonna make that video if I haven't already made that video because you know YouTube time metrics and whatnot. So if you don't know when you went to bed last night that be Wednesday for those of you for which the days are running together Oklahoma ranked number six in the 24-7 composite team rankings. I understand it looks better if you go to rivals, but since I cut a check from 24-7, let's not even go there. Number one, you got Alabama with 26 overall commits. And number two, you got Georgia with 21 and five five stars. Good grief. And number three, you got Ampersand U, which has 25, but seeing as it's Jimbo Fisher and it's Ampersand U, I don't expect them to do a whole hell of a lot with those. At number four, you got LSU, mostly a bunch of defensive gets, but you know, they still got a quarterback that they need and they still got wide receivers that they need. So we'll see what happens over there in a conference run by Alabama and Georgia, basically. At number five, you got Oregon with 22 commits. And then you're kind of like, okay, Oklahoma has 22 and is at number six. So what gives? Well, some stars mean more than others. And what it really comes down to is that Oregon has 10 three-star commits to Oklahoma's eight. Oklahoma has two five-stars to Oregon's one. And Oklahoma has 12 four-stars to Oregon's 11. Now, we can all be petty and we can talk about why stars shouldn't matter or you should be weighted differently. But the fact of the matter is, Oregon is ahead of Oklahoma by nine-tenths of a point in the team rankings. And we still got two months left to go to national signing day dude i wouldn't get my boxers in a bunch over that because at number seven you got clemson who's got 26 commits which are four more than oklahoma has and they are at seven michigan behind them with 27 commits my goodness the boat can't get much fuller than that at number nine and one of those is dax hill now just as an aside dax hill was all set to go to alabama after being committed to Michigan for two and a half months. And then on the night of the Heisman Trophy ceremony, he dropped that he was flipping his commitment to Alabama. And I expected that man to sign his national letter of intent with Alabama on Wednesday morning. But not only did he not have a signing ceremony, all of a sudden his national letter of intent ended up in Michigan and was like, yeah, okay, that's where he's going. He's going to be a Michigan man. Let's not talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. I mean, I want to know what was said and who said what, because when I went to bed on Tuesday night, I had Alabama adding Jordan Battle and Dax Hill to their bevy of recruits. And it turns out Jordan Battle got into the Alabama boat and Dax Hill did not. Now, I know that Oklahoma was in on Jordan Battle and it felt like somebody, be it Alabama or Oklahoma, was going to get a flip from an Ohio State commit. Thought it was going to be Alabama because that's just where you go if you want to be in the NFL because as good as Oklahoma is, one of the things they can't say is they put defensive backs into the league. But then when Dax went to Michigan, it felt like some dominoes were falling because Jordan Battle ended up at Alabama and Oklahoma still had a safety spot to fill with Ty DeArmond, who we'll get to in a bit. But that whole thing is just kind of weird, and I'm sure we're going to hear more about what had gone on. But knowing that Dax is a quiet dude by nature, I don't expect him to have a whole lot to say about it. But over the next couple of years, this is going to be one of those recruiting stories that's just weird. But most recruiting stories are just weird. Rarely do these things ever go to plan, and we're going to get into that too. Then at number nine is Tejas with 22 commits. Still holding on to them singles, I see. Because, yeah, you picked up some pretty good commits, but one of them was not Noah Kane. And I thought that him committing to Penn State is one of the reasons that they ended up in the top 10 in the recruiting rankings after early signing day. Penn State with 18 total commits still has time to move up the board. I really like Noah Kane as a pickup there. It was a good choice by him. Get away from the South, get away from Louisiana, get away from the Big 12, go to a place where running backs have been pretty good and that'd be Penn State. Now digging into Oklahoma's 22 commits, we got some pretty nice gems here. I mean, offensively, defensively, this is balanced like you read about and I'm excited about it. Five defensive linemen, 
five defensive backs, one linebacker. You got to start an 11 right there. And on the other side, you can say much the same thing. Starting with Theo Weiss, wide receiver, who many people believe is the best wide receiver in the 2019 class, Jaden Hazelwood or not. This dude can go get it. He can beat people. He can high point the ball. I have not seen that man drop a pass since I've been watching him, and that's been about two years now. The next five-star is Spencer Rattler, who I have lots of videos on the channel about, some of which are interviews with. Really excited to get him. He's pro-style quarterback. The knock on him is that he's slighter frame, but okay, whatever. If that's what you want to knock him for, fine. But you can't knock him for accuracy. You can't knock him for arm strength. You can't knock him for leadership. He's going to be leading this 2019 class and beyond. I'm really excited to see what Spencer can bring to that QB room, which is going to be filled with talent in 2019. Next guy on the list, another wide receiver, Trajan Bridges. Trajan Bridges is the Pied Piper of this class. He is in guys' ears like Jaden Hazelwood. He brought some more guys to Oklahoma that you wouldn't have expected to see. He keeps open lines to these guys. He is your most capable recruiter in this class, and he's got swag. Next guy on the list is Austin Stogner, who is a tight end, four-star dude. He is nasty. Like, that was the thing I took away from the opening finals, that this dude is down to throw down with you. I mean, he just was snatching balls out of the air and fighting dudes for balls. He wanted every bit of those linebackers and safeties. I'm excited to see what he does when he gets to Oklahoma because his hands, hands be real nice. You can do a lot with a dude that's six foot six, 240. A lot. The next guy on the list is a late addition and one we didn't expect to necessarily get in Jeremiah Cradell. Jeremiah is that dude on the defensive backs for Matter Day. Now, Matter Day has also got some really great dudes alongside him, like Elias Ricks playing safety, number one recruit in the 2020 class, and four-star commit Darian Green Warren, 2020 of the class. Yeah, man. All of a sudden, Lincoln Riley's going into Los Angeles and pulling out defensive recruits. Good luck with him. Next guy on the list is Stacy Wilkins out of Arkansas. Thought he was going to go woo pig early on. Ended up committing to Oklahoma during the summer. Stuck with Oklahoma. Signed his national letter of intent. He's got tremendous upside. He's one of the bigger, more slight of frame guys playing an offensive line. Means he's going to fill out and be pretty good. I really like Stacy's length and what he can do with his hands and being next to guys like EJ Indoma Ogar, who is pure offensive guard and will pancake you, put you on the ground, serve you up with syrup. Man, I'm excited about seeing those two play next to each other, as well as the fellas playing across from them. One of them, outside linebacker Joseph Wete, the best player out of the District of Columbia. One of the things I'm most excited about with him is the noggin, man. It's not just that he's put on 30 pounds and that he can come off the edge. It's that he's got a mind for the abstracts of football. He's going to study architectural engineering when he gets to Oklahoma. Really excited to see what he can add. The next guy on the list is Woody Washington. Woody Washington is the cover corner in this class. He's the ball hawk. He's the dude that Tennessee wanted in the worst way, not least of which is because he's coming out of the state of Tennessee and he is one of their prized jewels and that Kerry Cook could pull him out of Tennessee, bring him to Oklahoma, speaks volumes about his ability as a recruiter. I'm excited to see that dude on one side and on the other, Jaden Davis out of St. Thomas Aquinas. Another guy that is not necessarily a cover corner so much as he's versatile. The dude can play cornerback, he can also play nickelback, and yeah, he'll snatch some balls out of the air and he'll take the pick six back to the house. Of course, on the edge, again, a late signing day addition, Marcus Stripling, a dude I thought was going to end up at Texas A&M, and most folks would tell you over the summer that's what it looked like, but the six foot two, 260-pounder picked Oklahoma's hat up from underneath the table, and you know... He looks a lot like Ronnie Perkins to me. One, number one, he's already bigger, right? He's larger than Ronnie is now. But like Ronnie Perkins, I could see him sliding over to the three technique, using him in that Aaron Donald kind of role where you want that dude to have that matchup against the interior lineman where he could dominate because he can absolutely move. I'm excited to see how Mark Stripling can fit into whatever it is the permanent defensive coordinator scheme looks like in 2019. Of course, he's going to get plenty of opportunities to stop the run because Mark's major is part of this class. Pride of OKC Millwood. He has drawn comparisons to Adrian Peterson. That's lofty praise. It's also the kind of thing that I'll believe when I see. But if he's even half as good as Adrian Peterson, yeah, man, Marcus Major could be that dude. Of course, he's going to get knocked around a bit because Marcus Hicks is on the other side. Six foot five and a half, 241 pounds. The thing I like most about Marcus Hicks ain't that he's one of the best recruits out of Kansas. It ain't how he comes off the edge. It ain't how he's unblockable. It's that he wrestles. I got a soft spot for wrestlers just in general, but I watched some tape 
of this dude. I see some tape. I watched highlights of this dude where he's literally picking up heavyweights and they're at 284 and slamming them down on the ground like the rag dogs. This dude has strength that he doesn't even know he has yet. Benny Wiley gets a hold of him, watch him blow up in a hurry. He probably ain't going to stick out there at defensive end for very long. If he is, he's a five, he's a four. I see him moving inside to a three or even a one technique, depending on how much weight he can put on. And then at safety, you have four-star Jamal Morris. I like Jamal Morris. He's got a great mind on him. He's tremendously talented as a tackler. He sees the game well. Every time I've had an opportunity to talk with Jamal, he has presented himself with respect. He knows what he's getting at. He knows what he's talking about. He knows who he wants to be when he gets to Oklahoma. He projects to me as a strong safety type, but I could see him moving to free safety. He has that kind of ability. Next guy is six foot three, 273 pound Corey Roberson. Corey is a dude that's kind of, he's interesting to me, right? Because his upside is there. And I can see him as a five, I can see him as a three. But I think maybe you're looking at him to play that role that Kenneth Mann does now, where he's your strong side defensive end, responsible for crashing down the line, trying to string plays out, and basically keeping contained. But we'll see what he looks like when he gets into Benny Wiley's weight room. Jonathan Perkins is the only linebacker in this class, which I don't know how you might think about that. You could add at linebackers to the class, obviously, but that Jonathan Perkins moved from safety to linebacker speaks volumes about his speed. Now, the last guy that moved from safety to linebacker of note for Oklahoma, Kenneth Murray Jr. Now, Kenneth Murray Jr. did it at about the same age, and he was playing outside linebacker. Jonathan Perkins projects as an inside linebacker, but again, you can see those guys doing some moving around, some moving and some shaking, but one of the things that I like about Jonathan Perkins is that everything he does is with bad intentions. It's exactly what you want out of a linebacker. He grits his teeth when he hits you. The next signee is an all-namer. That'd be Finley Felix. He is a 6'5 and a half, 310 pound offensive tackle out of Coffeyville, Kansas. I think this is one of those guys that you're probably going to redshirt in 2019. He's got three years to play two, specifically getting toward Bill Beatonboat and seeing what he can do with you, seeing how he can help you become technically sound. Last guy that was a great pupil of his showed up, Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown had size, had the intangibles, didn't have the hands, didn't have the feet, had to work for everything he got. But Bill Beatonbow taught him what he should know, and Finley Felix could go the same way. Next guy was a late addition. That'd be Leron Stokes out of NEOANM. This is another strong side defensive end. Rated number four and his position at the JUCO rank, 6'4, 245. Has a motor on him. 76 tackles, seven sacks, eight tackles for a loss. Does not give up on plays. That's the thing I like most about him. Plus, he really wanted to come to Oklahoma. He was raised in Tulsa. This was his dream offer. He took it when they offered it to him. He's ready to come play. The next guy is the sleeper of the class for me. That'd be Derek Green. I got to speak with him at length over the summer after the Champion Barbecue. I love the man. Southern and country like you read about, but there's just not a lot to say about him from a camp standpoint because he just didn't do that kind of stuff. But at six foot five, 290, and knowing that Ruffin McNeil really liked him and was his sheepdog, the dude that led him to Oklahoma, I got to say that I'm really excited to see what this defensive tackle, the only one in the class, can bring to Oklahoma at a position where we have been yearning for some different makers up front. Out of Sunnyvale, Texas, Marcus Alexander, offensive guard, playing opposite EJ and Doma Ogar in this 2019 class. Six foot three, 295, another dude with tremendous upside, also is going to take Bill Beatonbow's guidance and we're gonna need it for him because he's a little bit raw, but I love his length and I love his lower half. I think he could be powerful. And then Ramondre Stevenson is the number one Juco running back in the country and he should be. He averaged nine and a half yards per carry. He had over 2,000 yards on just over 200 carries. And the thing that sticks out to me about Ramondre Stevenson is that he's a lot larger than most of the folks who are chasing him. Six foot one, 235 pounds. That's the my JP Ryan size he's got there. I'm really excited to see what he can add to a running back rotation that is going to have some new blood, it's going to have some new bodies, but it's also going to have Kennedy Brooks, Trey Sermon, and TJ Pledger coming back. And then the last guy, the late addition, the out of nowhere signing, safety Ty DeArmond. Now, this was an Arizona State commit since June. A lot of folks thought he was a Sun Devil in waiting, but apparently he became a take late for Oklahoma. They said, do you want to come? And he didn't hesitate. He flipped his commitment. He signed his national letter of intent. 
He's a Sooner. So I went back and I watched film of him because I watched film of everybody else but this kid because like everybody else, I hadn't really been keeping up with him because he wasn't coming to Oklahoma. And yet what I see is a cerebral safety, a guy with a high football intellect who knows where the play is going, diagnoses plays. He's not running in the direction of the ball. He's watching the play unfold, and he's making an informed decision. It's the kind of dude that plays the game a lot like a linebacker in the way that he sees run fits, but his ability to see the game at the high level of a safety makes him your prototypical quarterback of the defense. I really like to see what they do once they blow him up a little bit, but that's not to say he's undersized. He's 6 feet 190. If he gets to 6 one two ten. All of a sudden, we're talking about a free safety, strong safety to be paired with Jamal Morris back there, and you got some hitters. So that's all 22 of Oklahoma's commits. The one dude to keep your eye on, though, as we get nearer to signing day, is Jaden Hazelwood. All the crystal ball predictions predict Jaden Hazelwood to Oklahoma. So at this point, it would be a shocker to a lot of folks that he went with Georgia or Miami. And who knows how good this group could be if they add Jaden Hazelwood to the mix. And for those of us that keep up with the recruiting rankings and they mean something to us, adding Jaden Hazelwood to a class of 23 has to vault you into the top five, has to give Oklahoma its first top five finish in Lincoln Riley's reign. This is without a defensive coordinator. Man, this is becoming regular for Oklahoma finishing inside the top 10 in recruiting class, but also with Lincoln Riley's system, the quarterback that he's bringing in, and the ability he has to recruit these players, Lincoln Riley's position in Oklahoma to not just be a problem this year in the college football playoff and next year in 2019, but in 2020 and 2021, Oklahoma becomes the sexy pick to win the national title. All right, that's it for me. Deuces. <laughs>